five reasons you shouldn't rehab your own flip, even if you're a contractor. Many investors working on their first rehab deal figure they'll do the rehab themselves. They figure they can save more money by not hiring a contractor and it'll probably be a fun project to take on. However, I'm here to convince you otherwise. Even if you're a licensed contractor, I don't think you should be rehabbing your own project and I'm gonna tell you why. One of the big things I wanna talk about here in rehabbing your own property is first and foremost, everybody underestimates the amount of work that's there. They think they can get it done in a weekend or a couple of weeks or whatever the case is. Is, and it ends up taking way too long. The other thing you've got to keep in mind is if you are a contractor and you have other jobs, this job is going to take a backseat priority. One of the things a lot of contractors don't think about when they're rehabbing their own property is the cost of money. One of the things that you can do is figure out the cost of money, and I want to show you how to do that right now. Okay, guys? So let's just say that you have a loan for $100,000. Let's say the interest rate is 15%. That means the interest per year is $15,000. So if I divide that by 12 months, I think that's gonna put me like 1250, but let me just make sure because I don't wanna be recording this and have you guys say Ryan doesn't know how to do math. Yep, 1250, how do you like those? I just, I just double checked it. So that's 1250. Now, if I divide that by 30 days, that's gonna give me $41.66 a day is really what I'm paying here. That's on the money. Now that's evenings, that's weekends, that's everything else here. And on top of that, you've got other costs. Let's say you have an extension fee. An average extension fee is like 1%. 1% of that is another $1,000. So if I end up having to do some extension fees, um, which is typically after your initial term, you would end up having to pay some extension fees um, if you're past your initial term. I'll explain that here in just a minute, but if it's $1,000, so that's thirty. dollars $33. And if you add those together, $41.66, all of a sudden you are at like $75, 70, yeah, $75 per day. Now that may not seem like a lot of money, but it certainly adds up fast. Let me explain this whole idea of an extension. Basically, this loan is typically written for, you know, three to five months. Um, we typically write loans for about five months is typically what we do. But here's the problem. If you go over the five months, um, when you do the loan, there's an origination fee, you know, to actually originate the loan and make the loan happen happen. Well, if you're taking more than five months, the lender can't go get another origination fee. And so the lender is saying, well, if I'm going to extend it, you're going to have to pay something. And a typical fee is about 1%. So that can add up really fast. So what we want to make sure we're doing is we want to make sure that we are getting the job done. But if you're a general contractor, one of the things that you'll probably do is put other people's jobs first and not put your job first, and then your job's gonna be lacking, and then you're not going to be able to get it done in the timelines that you need to. And in addition to that, a lot of lenders put in there some constraints that say, hey, if you're not hitting benchmarks, then we can call the loan due. Basically, if you don't get the rehab work done in the time that we think makes sense and we agree to in the beginning, then you're in default. And that's not a situation you wanna be in if you're a general contractor and you have this. The other thing to keep in mind here is that you may underestimate the amount of work that's necessary. I've got a loan right now with a contractor doing a draw from him and he's like, oh, you know what? This is gonna cost more money than I thought, you know, because he had blinders on, he couldn't see everything. The other thing is, is if you're not a contractor and you're like, I'm just gonna go uh, do this work for myself and get this done and save some money, nothing really wrong with that. But what I typically see with that is number one, the work quality just simply isn't there. It's gotta be good quality work. And if this is the first time you've ever used a paintbrush or the first time that you've ever laid tile, let me tell you from my own experience, my wife hated my first tile job that I ever did, she's probably right. It wasn't that great. But if you're doing that and you're trying to resell the property, that's gonna be a problem because all the buyers are gonna not like that. So what's the cost of you having to rip out that tile and put it back in? If you are wanting to do the work yourself, I don't recommend it for these reasons. Number one, the quality of workmanship. And number two, it's really important that you get a quality contractor to determine the scope of work and determine that what it's gonna cost to be done. So you can be in the realm of possibility because here's what happens happens. I'm going to do the work myself. So I go out there to the property. I underestimate what needs to be done. I close on it. And all of a sudden I find out there's $10,000 or $20,000 more work that I was overseeing because I had rose colored lenses on, right? I was looking through this and all I saw was dollar signs and I didn't see the work that was necessary. So that's something important as well. And if you are doing the work yourself and you're not a general contractor, the other important point is what we talked about earlier is the cost per day that you're really not thinking about and the time frame that you have to make 
make sure it gets done. One of the things that can happen whether you're doing it yourself or you're a contractor doing it yourself is you can be okay with not as good workmanship because you just want to get the project done. And so it's kind of hard to say that your own baby's ugly. Am I saying you shouldn't do this? Yeah, could you? Possibly if you have some of these checks and balances in place. If you were interested in doing that yourself, I would recommend that you put it as a priority. I would recommend you have another contractor that comes and gives you a bid as a backup. I'd recommend that you have subcontractors lined up and ready to do the work. So you have those types of things. So I think there's a way to do that, but I don't necessarily recommend it. And that's the next thing that I wanna talk about. If you're working with other general contractors, they should have trusted subcontractors that are ready to go. The great thing about subcontractors is we can have multiple people working at the same time. See, if you're the guy that's gonna do everything, it's gonna take a long time. But if I can have somebody doing the electric and somebody on the roof and I can have somebody painting and they can all be there on top of each other at the same time, then I can get the project done a lot faster, which means I'm gonna save a lot of money in interest. That's a big thing. The other thing that I find that happens a lot with people wanting to do the work themselves, and this will be my number five, is they don't think about the cost of their own labor. And this can be okay to get people into the game, but at the end of the day, you should be making money even after you pay a general contractor. And if you choose to do work yourself, even though we've gone through all the reasons why you shouldn't, you should be getting paid for doing the work and you should be getting paid as taking on the risk as the investment. And what I find is a lot of people doing the work themselves are simply just getting paid to do the work and they're not getting paid to take on the risk of doing the investment. That's a problem for me because you should be getting paid for both of those. Now, no lender is gonna wanna get you to get paid as you're doing the work, but when you close out and you pay off the loan, that's when you should be seeing your profit, when the closing actually occurs and you should be getting a profit for both taking on the risk and for the work that's actually been done. Because if I go hire general contractor. I've got to pay that general contractor. He's got to make a profit and I have to make a profit. So if I'm only making a profit for me and I'm not making what I would have paid a general contractor in profit and I was doing the work myself, I'm shortchanging myself. Now, you may have to do that to kind of get yourself into the game, but you've got to be very careful. I would recommend that you just go out there and find better properties rather than you trying to be on both sides of the transaction. These are big things you need to be thinking about if you're looking to do your work yourself, even if you're a general contractor, I recommend that you don't. You're going to not be able to call your baby ugly. You're going to underestimate the amount of repairs that are going to be necessary. You forget about the opportunity costs. This is a big one of going and finding new properties. See, in the amount of time you could have spent rehabbing, if you could have gone and found another property, that could have been more profitable for you than what you would have made in doing the rehab. And if you weren't getting paid to do both sides of that, eventually you're selling yourself short. I have put together a video on the 10 commandments for managing a contractor during the rehab process. I'm gonna put it on the screen here so you can check it out. I go through a few things. Why bad contractors are the number one reason good deals fail, how to pick a great general contractor, and how to practically guarantee they don't go over budget. This is a big one. You're gonna to wanna to check this video out, the 10 commandments of managing contractors during rehab and make it a very profitable day.